This is a variation of the squint test. Um. <laughs> Who uses the command line? Ooh, there's quite a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I wasn't pressuring you. I was just saying, we, we need to encourage you more to do that. Um, it's awesome. The command line is great. I use it heaps. Um, however, there is the caveat if you can remember the commands. If, if you're using some sort of GUI-based tool that's got a menu and you can't remember what menu a certain option is in, you just look in all the menus until you find it. With the command line, it's a bit harder. Um, one thing you might have tried is you might have tried typing help. Um, and you get a lot of help. I mean, ooh, look at all that. Um, it's, it's both overwhelming and underwhelming in that Yes, there's a lot there, but there are a lot more commands on a Linux or Unix system than that. So what this actually is, is this is um, all or most of the commands that are built into the bash shell. So the shell itself and, and not things like ls you might use for listing files, um, which are external utilities that aren't built in. So there's, there's help, which tells you about things that are built into the shell, there's man, which you would use to find out about other commands, so that's short for manual, so reading the manual pages. Um, and there's also info, um, which you would use if you hated yourself. Um, <laughs> back, back in history, the, the GNU project, who, who have developed a lot of these tools, decided that the traditional Unix man page system was a bit too limited and what we needed was more more of a hypertext system so that you could have structured documents that link to each other. Um, and that's an idea which has merit um, and they implemented it with this info tool and I assumed, because I, I personally don't use Emacs, I always assumed that the interface to info only made sense to Emacs users until I found out that they don't understand it either. So <laughs> anyway. So one of the problems with the man command is it's great if you know which command you want details about. Um, but it has this feature, minus K, where you can give it a keyword and it f will find um, man pages that are r relevant to that keyword in the theory. So in this case, I searched man minus K hex dump and it returned two um, lines of options. So if I want more details about the hex dump command, um, I could do man hex dump without the minus k, or if I want to know about this xxd command, I could do man xxd. And the reason I would have done this is because I probably didn't remember that xxd is the really good hex dump command, and it, I didn't want hex dump because um, I've used that before and don't like it. So if you want to know uh, what's the command for doing this, you can do man minus k and then give it a keyword. Now, when you do man on a, th a thing, so man xxd, you'll get a page of stuff. And the very first bit, you'll notice this, this name section has a name and a one-line um, summary of the command. If, if we go back here, that's what was coming out here. So you're only searching that one line from each man page. So it whatever you're looking for has to be in the one line description or the command itself, or man minus k won't find it. Of course, a lot of man pages are online, so Google can help you as well, but I'm talking about the command line, so let's stay there. If I'd done it as two separate words, hex space dump, what it would have done is it would have found every man page where that one-liner contained hex or dump. Which is a very long list. Now, in my 
not very well planned intro that I didn't do. I was going to say that um, this is, as I promised in, in, on the website, an eclectic list of commands that I'm going to talk about later. Um, so I guarantee everyone here will learn something. Um, in this section, so I've, I've got all the hexes and all the dumps, um, and you'll see all these numbers down here, and the manual pages come in different sections. So section one is commands for users. So that's usually what you're looking for. Section three is um, about library files. Um, and, and the section numbers aren't necessarily the same on other flavors of Unix. So BSD, for example, the section numbers are, are different. Um, so 3PM, for example, is um, it's a Perl module, um, and so this is a Perl library that you can get the man page there. Um, seven, section seven is miscellaneous stuff, um, and a lot of them in, in this particular example are descriptions of um, particular encodings, so like Ipsodic encoding and, and uh, different things. How many people knew that the Armenian extended ASCII is called Armski? Hands up, who knew that? Damn, so I've only got one person who still needs to learn something and I, I'm going to be stretching to teach you anything. Damn, I may have... But at least it's the only one to go. Um, other sections in here, section eight is commands for administrators, so ad ad administrative commands. Um, so you'll find things in there like for organizing your Linux volumes and, and disk mirroring and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, section five, I can't see an example there, but that's things like file formats. So if you're looking at something like the password file, um, oh, yeah, here's one. Um, this is for the, the mappings of, of keyboard layouts to character sequences, etc. Um, but yeah, if you did, did a man command where you looked in section 5 for password, then it would tell you what the individual fields in the password file were. Anyway, I was looking up hex dump, I found all this lot. I was probably mostly interested in the commands in section one. So if you are, um, then you can use this minus S1, and that has to be a capital S for reasons that are not clear because lowercase s doesn't do anything. Um, <laughs> which is also weird because one thing, I, I mean, I've been doing command line stuff for years and I look things up in man page all the time. I only found out last month that man is not case sensitive. When you type man and a command, some commands have uppercase letters in them, not many, but some do. Um, and, and the search, not even man minus k, just man and command is um, case insensitive. And this actually is super useful if I go back here. All these ones that are Perl modules, they have quite significant variations in, in the capitalization um, and it's uh, easier to find them with man than it is with the Perl, Perl doc command. Did you know that, Ollie? I'm not sure I knew it, it doesn't surprise me. I'll take it as a win. Okay, so we've seen help, we've seen man, we've seen Info, no we haven't seen info, we don't need to see info. Hint, hint is a command that I wrote to remind me about stuff and that's what this talk is really about. So hint, comes in two parts, a hints file and an alias to grip the hints file and that's really all there is to it. There's a lot of lies in there but we'll come to them later. So. A hints file, in, in my case, is simply a file called hints. And there's only one. Um, you might, for example, call it dot hints and put it in your home directory. In my case, um, 
I call it hints and I put it in a place called dot .common configs and this in, in my case um, is managed by a git repository and shared between a number of hosts that I log into so that I get the same bash RC aliases and such like. Not many hosts but a few. So if I add a hint to this file and push it up to git then it will end up available to remind me about stuff from a bunch of different hosts. So this is an example of three entries from a hints file. It's simply text with keywords that I think I might look for when I need to know this thing in the future. It doesn't have to be text that actually makes sense. So here, for example, the word Debian on the front isn't actually part of a sentence. Um, which package owns a file is, is you know, keywords or, or a question I might ask, but in the context of a Debian system, the answer is if you run dpackage minus capital S and give it a path name, that will tell you which package owns the file. Now, I can guarantee you knew that already. Yeah. Um, so that's what's in the hints file. The format is simply some keywords which may or may not make sense and then an example command. So I might type hint keyword and what I get out is all of the lines that matched but importantly where there was a colon the whole thing is, is turned into two lines so that I can triple click this line and paste it and it will select and run it because ultimately the reason you bring up a man page in almost every case is so that you can go to the synopsis section right at the beginning and copy something out of it, paste it and run it. You don't actually want to read that stuff. So if I got multiple matches, we'd get the text we get the sample command, then a blank line, and then some more text. So, I said um, the hint command is an alias to grep the hints file. There's almost nothing about that statement that's true. Um, it's not an alias, it's sh a shell function, and it doesn't use grep. It does use said, that looks um, quite complex um, and it's actually far more complex than it needs to be. It's one of those things that when you, when you write something you think okay this solves the problem and you use it for years and later you go back and look at it and think oh it would have been a much easier way to do that but I I mean I'm not going to stand up here and pretend I always write perfect code so I thought I'd put up some clearly imperfect code um, just to you know, make other people feel better. So it uses said, and this is how it works. Said is a command that you can use in a pipeline. It's called a stream editor. And you might, you might, for example, use grep to find some interesting lines in a log file. You might do stuff through various pipes and then put it through said, and you can, for example, substitute. Every time you find this, replace it with that. Um, and the G on the end means keep going after finding the first match on a line. Um, so that's an example of, of using said. So if you had a file that said 15 kg of Marmite um, and fed it through this command, you could end up with 15 kilograms of Marmite. And who wouldn't want that? You have to be careful, of course, because if you had a text file that contained the word background and you fed it through this, it would get turned into back kilograms round because it's got kg in the middle of it. Now, you might think, Grant, that's ridiculous. Who would do that? <laughs> so here's a uh, actual photo, not photoshopped, of what U2 song plays in the back kilograms round of the famous Friends episode? This is like one of those things where all the QA had been done and then someone said, oh, just before we ship, can you change 
kg to kilograms. Yeah, yeah, no worries, I can do that. I also like a um, movie with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jack Miller, Kilometer Stran, <laughs> son. <laughs> Sounds vaguely Japanese, Kilometer San. <laughs> anyway. So you can use said to change one thing to another. You could also, instead of substituting, you can just do pattern matching. And this is where you might, for example, um, so this one would pass every line through. Some of them, there would be a change. But even if there wasn't a change, the line would still pass through and end up in the output. You can use the minus n to say, don't print every line by default. And then, in this example, I'm looking for a match of any of these digit characters. And if it contains a digit, then the slash p on the end means print. So I'm not doing a substitution. I'm just matching in this case. And then you could combine them and say, any line that contains a digit, perform a substitution if it's got kg, kilograms, and then print it out. And that's what my alias is doing. Um, this dollar star is the thing I was searching for. The capital I is a case insensitive search. So every line that matches that case insensitively, it will look for everything up to the colon and everything after it and um, print it out with new lines inserted in places. And this is where, I'm, in, in retrospect, why I didn't just change the first colon to colon new line, I have no idea. This is like a super, super complex solution to a not very complex problem. Anyway, you might have a complex problem where that sort of thing is useful. And that one last bit of this function is this first line here, where if I ran hint and didn't give it um, a pattern, then this bit would match every line. Um, and so I'd get my whole hints file printed out with the new lines inserted, and that wouldn't be fun. So if the input is um, non-zero length, then do this. Otherwise, do nothing. So it's not actually two parts. It's three parts. The third part is actually an alias called vi hints. So I type vih tab, and it opens my hints file in Vim so that I can add a new hint. And one thing I've learned is don't add the hint on the end. Add it in a random place or next to other hints about that sort of command um, because it turns out I'm really bad at checking things into Git. So once I've accumulated three or four hints on each of these separate systems and then I go and check them in, I get merge conflicts everywhere if I put them on the end, so I don't do that. So, I, the, the point, did I have a point? I had two points. One point was, you guys should do this. You know, it's, you know what you keep forgetting you should keep track of it via a really simple system with a much simpler regex than this. Um, you know what keywords you're thinking of that eventually lead you to a certain command, regardless of the fact that they're not the keywords that are in the man page. So you know, make your own mappings. Um, you know which bizarre combination of, of parameters makes Git do the thing that you need to do on your project on a certain Wednesday in July um, that you could find by reading the manual, but once you've done it once, just put it in there so that you can find it easily next time. Chances are it's just scrolled out the end of your bash history when you need it next, next July. So be... so. I'm going to go through a random selection of hints from my hints file, um, just to give you a flavor of what's there. Um, there's lots of them there, and I'm obviously not going to go through them all. It was really easy to cull the ones that 
related to subversion. So I've been using Git for a long time. Before that, I used subversion, so nobody needs to know about that. And you definitely don't need to know about my CVS hints that I used before subversion. Um, before I get into the commands, a lot of commands that you run, including man and including git frequently, use the, the pager. It's called less. So it will give you a screen full of data, and if, if you hit spacebar, it will give you another screen, whatever. Or enter key. Um, the behavior of less can be modified by command line options and you can set your favorite options in an environment variable so that it doesn't matter how less is started, it will get those as defaults. Um, so that's super useful. This is the combination that I use. Now this first one if you didn't know this, this is life changing, but when you get a man page up and it's in, in the pager, you can do slash and then some text and it will search for that text in the page. Um, it amazes me that people don't know that when it's so intuitive, but apparently it's only intuitive to people who you use Vim. Um, anyway, um, Minus capital X, also life changing. I mentioned you go into the man page to find something to copy and paste. On some systems, by default, once you've found the thing you're looking for and you hit Q to get out of man and back to the command line, it erases the man page and restores what was on your screen before you went into man. So the very thing you want to copy and paste is now gone. So minus capital X turns that annoying behavior off. Um, you probably don't have a lot of problem with the page of beeping. Um, I used to. I'm not sure what's changed. Perhaps I've learnt something and I don't do it anymore, but minus Q makes it actually quiet. Often minus Q on Unix commands means don't print as much text. This literally means quiet, don't beep. Um, minus S is... Um, to, to uh, control what happens with long lines, whether you scroll across to the right or, or whether they get wrapped around. I don't find the wrapping behavior useful very often, so I turn that off by default. Um, minus capital F, if you've got a screen that's 25 lines long and there's 10 lines of output, then less just exits immediately with this option so you don't even have to quit out of it. It's just not there. And this last one, when you hit the button to get the next screen, which, is it enter? I don't know, I don't even think about it, I just do it. Yeah. Um, it always scrolls one more line than I want it to. So the last line that you see on the screen is the one that you can't see because it's just disappeared off the top. So I've lost context, so this, Minus Z minus two means scroll, ignoring the, the, so if you've got a 25 line terminal, the bottom line is there for less. So none of your document is on that bottom line. So the 24th line will be the last line that you can see. And so this will do Z, the 25 minus two is 23 lines so that that bottom line ends up the top line of the next screen, and I find that very useful for retaining context. Anyway, um, if you do mess with your less um, environment variable, which will almost certainly be set already by the system, um, have a look to see what it is before you start messing with it. Um, you might want to put it back. Um, if, you, um, if you're happy with how, how the man command works, you might want to go and try some stuff that you do with Git and see if it's been horribly compromised by the changes you made. There are lots of other options, some of them you might find useful, um, I, I didn't so I didn't include them. So you can do a man page on less and it will tell you all about those options. Anyway, the random collection of hints that I promised, already done this one, if you want to find out which file which package a file belongs to, 
um, then you can say dpackage minus s. And this is a Debian Ubuntu thing. Um, so for example, if I give it the path name to xxd, user bin xxd, which was that hex dump tool, we find out it comes with them. Yeah. Good hint, Richard. I may have just learned something myself. This is towards the end. This is after the gap of um, 16 slides, not 16 independent commands. Um, some of the, yeah. Anyway, I'll just do this. Um, hint, projector. What this is for is when I plug my laptop in um, to something like this, and I want the projector to come up at a particular resolution and in a certain place to the right of my laptop screen. So the X, R and R command, which has nothing to do with rest and recreation, it's to do with resolution and rotation and there's a third R which doesn't occur in the name. I forget what it is. Um, in fact, resolution might not even be one of the R's, but it is one of the things you change with this tool. So here I'm saying this, if you run XR and R with no options, it lists all the display devices and it lists all the modes that each one supports in terms of the resolutions. So I did that and found out that this one is my built-in laptop command, LVDS1, um, and the HDMI port is HDMI1, um, and this is the native resolution of the um, laptop screen and I might have my slides optimised for a certain screen size and I want that to be the same distance off to the right. You can have overlap and weird things if you want um, and you can make one screen rotated, clockwise, anti-clockwise, mirrored. Um, reflection was the other R that you can do. So if you've got a screen that um, people only view via a mirror, then you can reflect it vertically or horizontally so that it comes out right. Um, so obviously this is stuff that you can do by messing around with the little GUI panel, but this is exactly what I want every time. And in fact, I never use it for my hints file because I actually have an alias that just projector on and projector off. Um, and this one here was a variation where the, the projector, I let it choose whatever resolution it would like to be. Yeah. I was hoping that, that would go on to the next one. Oh, wow. I'm failing at technology today. Ah, right. Thomas isn't here. No, I thought I'd throw in a Postgres hint for Thomas. If you've got a query, a lovingly crafted query that you're running in, in PSQL, if you take the query, which might be a multi-line thing, and you put copy open bracket before it, close bracket to standard out with CSV header after it, then your query gets spat out in nicely escaped, appropriately quoted CSV. Um, which is super handy for very little effort. These are the hints I like. Another kind of niche one, um, in the main app that I work on here, um, I often find myself wanting to get one particular column, which is a, an integer between zero, uh, sorry, one and 71, that being how many electrodes there are, um, with a, uh, two digits, so leading zero, and by default, the two char zero nine will give you a three character string, which is a space where there might be a, a minus sign if there were any negative numbers, which there aren't, followed by a zero padded two digit string. And I never want that space, so FM09 is the entirely unintuitive formatting code to get the uh, positive integer without the space. So that's the sort of thing 
which probably interests very few of you, but I frequently um, go to my hint to find it because I know it's there and then I don't need to remember. Yeah, so um, all those really good commands that I was going to tell you about are in the gap of 16 <laughs> slides, which apparently didn't make it onto my USB key. Um, love your future self. When you eventually find something, stick it in your hints file. Um, unless it's something that shouldn't be in a hints file, because some things really need to be a script so that you can just run them, maybe from cron. Some of them need to be in a make file or, or similar things so that the build command just works without anybody having to know these cryptic things. And some of them are actually documentation and they need to be in a readme file so when someone else picks up your project they know what to do with it um, and they're not going to be reading my hints file, I hope. It's very, very private. Um, so, the end. Any questions? No. I apologise for my technology failings. Yeah, I'll put I'll put the slides online. Um, and David, if you want to send me your slides, I can probably get yours off here if my USB key works. Um, and if you want to send me some links, I'll put those up on the site as well. Richard. Probably. I. I was thinking if you had your projects to have an optional space at the beginning, yep. then put in space. So, so you're thinking if you had been the person at the <laughs> the um, Trivial Pursuit it company. It would help it to stop running the word kilogram directly after the number. Where right. It right. Right. So number kg into perhaps number space kg. Or maybe I'm overcomplicating my regex again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Tom. With the hints, hints approach you use, which is awesome, uh, I do something similar with a foodoo file. And um, you mentioned uh, version control. Um, my little function that does it, when I'm done adding or editing my foodoo file, does the add to it. Yeah, that's an excellent suggestion. I should do that. <laughs> it would actually have to do git push um, to solve my problem um, and maybe a git pull first. <laughs> Yes. Yes, and I'd only find out when I used the hint and found it came up twice after doing a git merge. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But too much information is probably better than none. Yeah. Or, yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I have. I've read almost all his books. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's all online, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I I should make sure I have read it. Yeah. I I I'm certain I started it, and then I I probably thought I should probably be working right now, and and maybe maybe left the tab to come back to. Right. Okay. Okay, I've been warned. Any other questions or observations? Ollie. Git supports a feature where you can have a, I can't really call it. Like Different a, strategies, merge yeah, strategies, so yeah. There's one for change logs. Yep. So you can say this is a change log file. If it's a conflict, there's two people have to stop at the top. It doesn't matter. Resolve just them by looking at the dates and putting one above the other. Oh, okay. So yeah. 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 Well, particularly when it doesn't matter. 
everyone is one line and they're, they're atomic. Yeah. yeah, I should look into that. Yeah. Cool. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs>